Welcome to Evidence Based, a new Harbinger Psychology podcast. We're your hosts, Cassie and Kendall. On today's episode, we're talking about boundaries. We're joined by Sharon Martin, author of the Better Boundaries Workbook. She is a licensed psychotherapist who has been practicing in San Jose, California for over 20 years. She specializes in helping individuals struggling with perfectionism, codependency, and people pleasing using cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness, and self compassion. She is also the author of the CBT Workbook for Perfectionism. She writes the popular blog Conquering Codependency for Psychology Today and is a regular media contributor. She's been quoted in publications such as Redbook, Magazine, Simple Most, The Huffington Post, and on Healthline.com, Today.com, and Inc.com. Hi, Sharon. Thanks so much for joining us. We're excited to talk to you today about boundaries. Oh, thanks so much. I'm happy to be here and happy to talk to you about boundaries, one of my favorite topics. Hi, Sharon. Yeah, like Cassie said, thank you for joining us. Um, we've been working through the Better Boundaries Workbook ourselves, so this is really fun to be able to sit down and talk to you about it. Um, kind of to start and lay the groundwork for the conversation we're going to have, what are some of the common misconceptions about boundaries, and how can we start identifying what, what those are? Mm. Yeah, good place to start. Um, I think often people feel like boundaries are are something mean or selfish that they are are sort of doing to somebody else almost. So they they've sort of got it in their mind that sort of it's the reverse of of what we really want to be thinking about a boundary in terms of a way um, to get a particular need of our own met, and that this is a completely normal thing, healthy thing for us to do because everybody has needs. Um, and especially when we're talking about being in relationship with other people, it's important that that sometimes we need to explain what those needs are and ask other people to make a change or do something to help us meet one of those needs. Um, so again, going back to what you were asking in terms of the misconceptions, I think often it's really that people are feeling like I'm doing something that's not okay, that there's something fundamentally wrong about asking somebody to perhaps change their behavior um, or even to assert that I need something or I want something in a particular situation doesn't feel comfortable um, for a lot of people. So that's where we kind of get into that, you know, feeling selfish or feeling guilty um, about the idea of setting a boundary. Um, and, and I think also people are, are probably familiar with boundaries in terms of limits, and we can talk some more about, about that. Um, but that's really only one piece uh, of boundaries as well. Um, <clears throat> And the other thing I, you know, I think that people often forget is that boundaries go both ways. And so we tend to put a lot of um, focus on setting boundaries, which again, that's important and it's valid and we should do that. But we also have to remember that we have to, you know, be on the other side of it too. And we have to sometimes work on respecting other people's boundaries. So what are the, the benefits of, you know, knowing your boundaries and setting your boundaries? And respecting others' boundaries, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of them. Um, so again, going back to to the idea of of setting limits, um, because that's that's one aspect of boundaries that that provides a lot of benefits for us. So part of it is that benefit. Um, sorry, the boundaries um, they provide safety for us. Um, physical safety and emotional safety. I would say probably the emotional safety is really the, the bigger piece. Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm sure there are some people who are listening who will find themselves in physically unsafe situations where you need to you know, change your behavior, ask somebody else to make a change so that you can, can be physically safe. But, but more often, it's really, it's something that we sort of talk about in terms of this idea of emotional safety that, that you know, emotionally abusive, it feels emotionally painful or hurtful um, to be in that experience. And that's where we often need to set limits with other people to protect ourselves from being harmed in any any of those ways. Um, The other thing is that boundaries help us to maintain our sense of self. Um, And what I mean by that is, um, you know, if you think about yourself as, as a unique individual, a separate person from from other people. Of course, we're we're connected to other people, but but we're each our own individual selves. And if we don't have a boundary that really 
provides um, that defining line between where I end as a person and where you begin, we start to have this, this sort of sense of enmeshment where we don't have that definition anymore. And, and, um, I get unclear about what my ideas are, my thoughts, my values, my opinions, because it's harder for me to distinguish those from other people's. Um, so again, that's that that element of sort of losing a piece of yourself that can happen if you don't have a boundary that distinguishes, you know, who you are as a person. Um, and the other piece that that's sort of related to that um, is that. Boundaries will help us to understand what we're responsible for and what other people are responsible for. And this is related to that, that piece of being able to distinguish you know, myself from somebody else. Um, because when I do that, I'm also aware of what's in my control, um, you know, what my commitments are, um, the things that I can actually do something about. Um, and by understanding that, I'm less likely to perhaps like accept the blame for something that somebody else has done. Um, you know, anybody can say, hey, it's your fault. You didn't do this. But when I have clear boundaries, I understand what actually is my responsibility um, or my commitments. Um, let's see. Um, the, the other thing that we can talk about is, is certainly how um, boundaries help our relationships to be better. And I think this is one of those misconceptions um, that people often have going back to you know your original question um, is that people often think that boundaries will create friction in relationships and they can I'm not I can't tell you that it's not a boundary is not ever going to create any friction um, but but there are ways that we can work with that but ultimately boundaries can actually make relationships stronger they can help there to be um, a stronger connection rather than a disconnection, which is what people are afraid will happen if they set a boundary. They'll be angry. There'll be um, that, that conflict that happens. Um, but actually, when we're setting boundaries in our relationships, what we're doing is we're making explicit our expectations and our needs. And when we do that, a number of things can happen. One thing is that we're more likely to have fulfilling relationships because our needs are getting met and we feel respected and we feel understood. Um, and there actually tend to be fewer conflicts and misunderstandings in relationships where there are boundaries. Um, because again, when you're clear about what you expect from somebody else, um, then, then there's less of the, the going back and forth of, you know, well, I didn't know that's what you wanted, or I didn't know that was the expectation. And there's less of that violating of the expectations um, because it's clear from the get-go. Um, and this is something that for a lot of people is a really different idea. Um, as we go through life with so many assumptions that we think that it's clear to other people what we want them to do or how we want to be treated, but unless we're very explicit about it, you know, we're really sort of getting into that place of, of thinking people can read our minds or thinking that we all have right. the same needs or um, the same expectations in relationships. And, you know, I've been married for, you know, 25 years and I, I, I you know, it still almost baffles me sometimes just how, um, how much, you know, my husband and I don't necessarily understand each other's expectations still for <laughs> after all this time. Um, because it's not made it clear and it really has to be, you know, stated, um, this is what I expect from you. Um, and when you do that, um, then people can make informed decisions and they can let you know, yes, I can do that. No, I can't do that. And sometimes that's where there, there's a place for negotiation um, that, that not all of our boundaries are, um, you know, so fixed that there isn't a place where we can have a negotiation or a compromise about certain things. Um, that's not going to be, you know, the, the case if it's a safety type of issue generally, but, but a lot of things in our relationships, um, there is a place where we can have some compromise on our boundaries and come to agreements that work for both people. And again, that's where, you know, we end up with relationships that start functioning uh, much better and, and they feel better to everybody. 
Sure. I really like, Sharon, tying um, the importance of boundaries to emotional safety and also to your sense of self. Um, Obviously, that makes a lot of sense when those things are threatened or out of a line. Um, Someone is, you know, violating those those boundaries or the lack of boundaries you have for yourself. And so that seems like a really um, important catalyst to start the boundary setting yourself. Um, I was curious, in your book, you mentioned flexible boundaries. Can you talk a little bit about what that means? Because I know starting out with like really strict, hard boundaries is probably really difficult for people, especially those who are feeling like they're being taken advantage of or not able to set the boundaries. So could you explain what the flexible boundaries mean? Yeah, part of part of it is 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 related to what I was just talking about in terms of understanding that there are some boundaries that that we can negotiate, that we can have compromise on. And again, this goes back to you know that original question of, of a misconception, because I think that's another one is that people think, you know, the boundary has to be fixed. I, I say what my boundary is and it can never change. But the truth of the matter is our needs are always changing. Our circumstances are changes, changing. Our relationships are changing. And so our boundaries are also always in flux. You know, that's not to say that, um, you know, it, it's, you know, it may change from day to day with the same person, but, but there are certain boundaries, of course, that I would say are pretty, you know, fundamental that remain mostly the same. Um, but, but going back to the, this question about, um, you know, a rigid boundary or a flexible boundary, um, it, it's interesting because often people will find that they actually move between having boundaries that are too rigid and boundaries that are too weak. Um, so people often have a combination of the two. And when we have weak boundaries, I mean, essentially, we're not setting boundaries when we need to. So we're not speaking up about things that we need. We're, you know, letting people walk all over us. We're not not having a a voice in what's going on in our lives. Um, But again, oftentimes we'll move to the place of the other extreme, which is we, you know, set boundaries that are so harsh. It's almost as if we, we wall ourselves off from other people. Um, so when you've got a really rigid boundary, that's a place where you'd be refusing to compromise, um, even when it could actually be helpful in that situation, or you're not letting people essentially into your emotional experiences. Um, so if you've got a, a really rigid boundary, you might have difficulty trusting people, um, or forgiving people. So, so it's like, okay, if you've crossed that boundary, well, now I'm going to put up an even taller boundary, a stronger boundary. I'm going to, you know, keep you out. Um, you know, and again, this is an understandable response that a lot of people have when they've been hurt in relationships is I don't want to be vulnerable. So I erect that really strong, rigid boundary. Um, But the problem is that we're not really leaving any space for us to discern, does it actually make sense for me to let this person in? Um, Is it okay for me to ask for something in this relationship? Because even that can be a very vulnerable thing to do in certain relationships. Um, You know, and again, like I said, it's important that we understand that this is a normal response that that you're having to being hurt. Um, But we want to find you know, kind of that balance in between where we've got boundaries that are working for us that are helping us get those needs met. Um, but we don't want to keep everybody out either, because that's not a fulfilling way to go through life is to have, you know, yourself walled off from other human connections um, as the only way to feel like you're safe in the world. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I have a question, maybe this is going back a little bit, but uh, how how can you sort of identify what your boundaries might be? Like, is it always just like a gut instinct? Like this is, you know, where my boundary lies or is there a way to sort of self-reflect and, and find out what your boundaries might be? Yeah, I think there's a combination. Um, certainly we can think about different areas of our life and think about the fact that we need boundaries in different, you know, different sort of types of boundaries, excuse me, um, to meet different types of needs that we have. Um, 
you know, so we can think about what kind of boundaries do I need in my interpersonal relationships or what kind of boundaries do I need at work or what kind of boundaries do I need with my finances or my time. So that's one way that we can look at it. And that can be helpful, I think. Um, the other thing is it can be helpful to, to pay attention to the way that you're feeling in different situations. Um, and this is sort of working backwards, but I think once we get the hang of it, it can actually help us be more proactive with, with it. But, but essentially, you know, if you're noticing that you are feeling perhaps uncomfortable in a situation or angry or hurt by something that somebody has done, those are all cues that there's possibly a boundary issue going on. I'm not going to say a hundred percent. There could, could be something else, but, but you know, I think people are often surprised at just how many of the struggles that they're having actually do relate to boundaries. Um, you know, so so if you notice a, a difficult you know, feeling coming up, you can ask yourself and do that reflection. I think like, has something been going on that has led to this feeling? Do I see a place where somebody has done something that felt hurtful or it felt um, like they took advantage of me or um, I was misunderstood, I wasn't clear about something? I mean, there's a variety of different pieces to that that, that you might think about. Um, but like I said, you can use that emotion and think back. And, and sometimes, you know, you may not be able to pinpoint it because, you know, your feelings you know, you may not be noticing your feeling in the moment. And this is, again, an area where, you know, sort of the more you practice noticing how you're feeling, you're going to recognize the feeling sooner. Um, you know, for example, if you don't realize that you feel resentful, you know, about something that happened this morning until, you know, seven o'clock at night, it might be harder to connect those dots and realize that, you know, I'm feeling resentful because my boss asked me to, to work late on, on Saturday. Um, you know, whereas if I noticed that in the moment, I might have gone, oh, that, you know, that feels like a boundary issue right there. Um, and that's something that I need to pay attention to and figure out how I can set a boundary there um, so that I don't feel, you know, upset about the fact that I have, you know, my boss wants me to do something that doesn't really work for me. Um, so those are a, a couple of ways. Um, the other thing I think is just to be aware that boundaries are really based on our needs. Um, so if we are asking ourselves the question of what do I need in this situation, it's also going to help you figure out what the boundary is that you need to set. Um, what do I need? How do I want to get that need met? Um, and often there's a whole variety of different ways that you could get that need met. Um, and just, and just noticing that there's a variety of different options that you have can also feel empowering because in a lot of situations, probably the majority, um, there's not just one boundary that is the right boundary to set. Um, and this is, you know, another thing that's, that's helpful to remember is that everybody's boundaries are going to look different because we're all different people. Um, so, you know, I think often people are looking for you know, the answer, what is the boundary that I need to set in this situation? Just tell me, you know, what the right <laughs> boundary is. And, and I hear from a lot of people who also are afraid that, you know, they're setting the wrong boundary or the boundary is, you know, sort of what they're deeming as too much. Um, you know, and, and sure, I mean, it's possible that we're you know, kind of going overboard with our boundaries. Um, and again, and maybe getting into the rigid boundaries or maybe just not communicating in them in a way that's helpful. But, but if really, if you're coming from a place of this is what I need, it can't be wrong because, yeah. you know, the need that you have is, is just there. It's, it's something that we all have needs. And again, they're different at different times, but the need can't possibly be wrong, right? So if you have a need for, time alone or a need for um, time to socialize with somebody or a need for respect, there's nothing wrong with that. And so there's nothing fundamentally wrong about trying to get that need met. It, it's just, we start to get into the, you know, how do we get the need met? What's the most effective way? What's the way that's going to help us? What's the way that's going to be respectful um, to other people as well? 
I like that so much. Like it's a need that you deserve to have met. I think that's really powerful because, you know, so much of saying what you need can can come off as feeling selfish or, you know, any of those things. And I think there was a really good example in your book um, about a guy who needed to go to the gym every morning at 6 a.m. to help his panic attacks. And his dad wasn't respecting his boundary because he was telling him to take him to the airport. And so I think just like reiterating that is really powerful. Um, I had a question. If you have you seen sort of an uptick in awareness that there are boundary issues, especially during COVID. Like I noticed that I maybe didn't necessarily have boundaries at the forefront of my mind all the time, but uh, you know, that first holiday during COVID and telling my family that I wasn't going to be coming home, like that just brought boundaries more to my awareness than I think ever before. Have you noticed that? And sort of, um, do you have any tips maybe for people who are still trying to navigate those, uh, I guess, pandemic boundaries as something that is very like in everyone's awareness, I suppose. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, And I certainly notice that people are talking about boundaries, but I also recognize that my perspective is completely skewed on this because I sort of entrench myself in all things sure. boundaries, right? So, um, so my general sense is, yes, that there is greater awareness and people are talking about boundaries. Um, you know, it, you know, I've given, tried to give some thought to, you know, when I first started to even understand what boundaries are or use that term, and I really don't have any recollection other than I certainly know that it was not something that people were talking about when I was growing up. Um, it was not, you know, a concept um, that really was in the, um, you know, everyday language that, that people were having um, or using. Um, so anyway, you know, in, 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 and I think it's been interesting too, you know, thinking about those, those boundaries with COVID, as you mentioned, um, because one of the things that I've noticed is that, um, the pandemic has given some people um, the ability to set boundaries that I think they really wish they had been able to set long before this. And it felt yeah. like this mm-hmm. was permission to finally say no to things and to people that they didn't want to do that. It's like, this was a legitimate reason to not go home for Christmas or, you know, whatever it was that was difficult for them. And they had been wanting to get out of, um, so, so my hope is that that is something that people will carry with them as a positive here is recognizing um, that, that even if you technically can do something doesn't mean you should um, or that it is in everybody's best interest. And this is, I think, often a, a conversation about thinking about you know, other people's expectations about how we're supposed to behave and what we're supposed to be doing. And um, this is you know, it's tough when there's a conflict between what somebody else wants you to do and what you want to do, what you need when you recognize, well, what's in, you know, my best interest. Um, And again, this can be a need from any variety of different areas. You know, it could be a need, um, you know, if we use this um, example of um, going to visit family, you know, it could be that um, it feels like it's not good for your emotional health to do that. Or it could be that it's not good for your financial health to do that if it's going to cost you some money or um, it's going to um, be damaging to another relationship that you have. So the, there's a whole you know variety of different reasons why you might be feeling like that's not something that's going to work well for you. Um, but of course, it's hard when you've got you know family members saying they want you to come or um, or again, there's just the expectation, there's guilt that, that often comes along with that. People feel like they're doing something wrong. They're letting people down. Um, people are going to be angry with them. And sometimes that is the reality, is that when we start doing something different, um, other people are upset with us. Um, sometimes that's anger. Um, I think sometimes it's hurt that maybe comes out as anger. Um, and sometimes it's a whole variety of different things that nobody's really identifying because nobody's really talking about what the feelings are or even what the expectations are. It's just sort of a lot of unspoken, you know, kind of mess of emotional soup, if you will, um, that just feels really crappy for people. Um, 
so anyway, now I feel like I'm just babbling on about it, but, um, you know, I, you know, I, I do think boundaries have been, you know, uh, something that people have embraced and said, okay, you know, maybe this is a useful thing. Um, and, um, you know, but, it, but I think once, well, the pandemic's been interesting, of, of course, in terms of just its waxes and wanes here. And I think people are in all different places about what they feel like they, you know, want to be doing in terms of spending time with other people and so forth. Um, or even just, you know, people have, there's not just personal relationships, I think, that we're talking about here. It's also, you know, questions of, you know, going into the office or, you know, various other things like that as well about thinking about what feels comfortable for people. Um, but I, but I think maybe the message in all of that is, you know, really trying to think about what does feel right for you. What is the need that you have around this and how are you going to meet that and recognizing again that that's OK, whatever it is, that your need might be different than your sister's or your boss's. Um, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah, I th thank you, Sharon, for that, because obviously with the pandemic, that's something that's on our mind. And boundaries are just so applicable across the board to everything we're kind of navigating through this time. Um, but going off of talking about how it's, you know, in any sort of scenario, it's going to be difficult or there's going to be some challenges that come with setting boundaries, whether it be professional or in a friendship. Um, but what makes it so complex with family? It seems that creating boundaries with your family is just such a complicated matter. And what about that makes it so hard to do um, being with family? Well, I think with family, we're, we're often talking about patterns that have existed probably your whole life. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different than, you know, friends or acquaintances, people at work, those, you know, relationships. And I think identities are not quite as fixed. And so generally, the longer you've been behaving a particular way, you're interacting with somebody in a particular way, the more challenging it can be to change that pattern that you've got going on. Um, you know, and, and I think... I mean, and again, I mean, there are boundary patterns essentially that exist within families that can be hard to disrupt. Um, but I, I wouldn't say necessarily boundaries with your family are always the hardest to set. Um, I think there's different considerations with different relationships that we that we end up thinking about. Um, but but again, I mean, a lot of the, you know, issues that we have with boundaries often have stemmed from stuff that happened in childhood. So, you know, chances are if you're struggling with your boundaries, you know, probably other people in your family are struggling with their boundaries. So, again, right, we put together, you know, a whole group of people who have boundary related struggles and it's going to be more complicated than perhaps if you um, you know, having a boundary issue at work, but your coworker, you know, has really healthy boundaries. Um, that doesn't, you know, solve your boundary problem, but it can be helpful because, you know, now we've got at least one other person in this mix um, who is, um, you know, asserting themselves and, you know, understands the concept of boundaries and, you know, understands why you're doing this. Um, you know, because that's part of what happens, you know, when we've got a system of people um, who are all struggling with their boundaries is, you know, they may not really understand why you're setting boundaries and what the purpose of boundaries is. Like we're, we're all starting from a foundation of understanding and believing that boundaries are important, but, you know, your family may not. I mean, they may not know what the heck boundaries really mean. Um, or why you want to set them. And again, they may just feel like this is you being difficult or mean or selfish or something like that. Um, and I think it's easier to set boundaries with people when at least there's an understanding that we all share that this is something that's a useful endeavor um, for us to try to do. Sure. And I can see, I guess when I say complicated with family, what I'm thinking of really being complicated is like uh, an adult 
child setting a boundary with their parent and kind of like upsetting that order to say, okay, you know, these are my needs and you're infringing on my freedom or whatever it may be, or my personal choices. And I imagine that that's a really tough one to navigate, um, you know, telling your parents that you need space or that you're not comfortable doing certain things. And um, so, yeah, that, that is the really, I think would be the toughest piece. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a good, good example of it. Um, you know, I think in some families, no matter how old you get, you're still viewed as the child. Um, right. And that sort of speaks to what you're talking about is, you know, if your parents are still, you know, acting as if, you know, they're in charge of your life and they're making the decisions and you're supposed to go along with it. Um, right now, we, we, we do have some boundary issues um, going on there because they're, you know, they're not recognizing, first of all, that you are a grown up person who, you know, has control over their own life and should be making their own, your own decisions. Um, and they don't really have, you know, too much, you know, say over that. I mean, depending on the circumstances, um, you know, that that can you know be a little bit different in different families. But um you know, I think as as an adult, you know, most adults want to feel like they are in charge of their own life. And it doesn't feel good to have your parent, you know, telling you when you're 40 years old that, you know, you need to, you know, come out and clean, clean the garage on Saturday with them. Right. I yeah. mean, um, so um, it, it does. It does sometimes upset that order um, that you're talking about. Um, but, you know, again, there, there's probably going to be some pushback and some adjustment that needs to go on there. Um, and, I, and I think that's another good thing to remember is that sometimes it's not it's not just that people are upset with your boundaries. I think sometimes people don't understand them. And and honestly, sometimes there is just an adjustment period that needs to happen. You know, again, if we use that example of, you know, if you've been basically doing what your parents, you know, ask you to do for the last 40 years, and then out of the blue, you start saying, no, that doesn't work for me. Your parents are going to be just baffled. Like, what the heck is going on? You know, I don't know why you're acting like this. Um, and, and I don't think we, we shouldn't necessarily assume that they can't adjust or that this can't be accepted, um, that this shift can't happen. It's often just that we we know, or we've been thinking about this for some period of time and maybe doing it in other areas of our life. Um, and so it's like, in our head, we're further ahead with this change process than they are. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we need to just give them time to catch up, to, to adjust, to start understanding, again, why you're doing this and what it's gonna look like and what they can expect from us. Um, so that it's it's not just this shock to their you know system um, that that feels completely foreign to them. So what are some ways that we can enforce our boundaries and and do you have any tips for saying no, really? Mm -hmm. Well, I do think there are nicer ways to say no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, th and that's, again, the challenge that I think a lot of people are afraid that they're going to hurt people's feelings, they're going to let them down. And, and that's all valid. Um, but it's entirely possible to say, say no in a nice way, to be polite about it, and to be succinct. I think um, sometimes people feel like they need to give a lengthy explanation of why they're saying no. Um, and that's I would say generally not needed. Um, sometimes it's not helpful. Um, sometimes providing all of the details really just, you know, gives people a place to, to sort of pick apart, you know, your reasons. Um, but that's, that's, I think, an issue of sort of knowing your audience, uh, who it is that you're saying no to. Um, and if they're likely to just say, okay, I respect the fact that you're saying no and, and that's, that's enough um, versus other people. Um, but again, in close relationships, sometimes it does you know, make sense to, to explain the reasons why. Um, but, but we wanna pay attention to things like our, our tone of voice. Um, you know, I think, and our facial expressions, those are two things that are, are very um, important. It's not just the words that are coming out of your mouth, but it's the way that you're saying it um, that matters probably just as much. Um, 
you know, and, and part of that can be, you know, genuinely letting somebody know that you are sorry that you can't help them with that. I mean, that doesn't change the fact that you're saying, no, I'm not going to do it. Um, but it doesn't need to be a harsh, um, you know, statement that you're making um, to them. Um, so, so that's that part of it. Um, enforcing boundaries is, it's hard. Uh, <laughs> there's sort of no way around that. Um, but it's important that we, you know, give some attention to it because you're absolutely right. I mean, it's not just about setting the boundary, but it's also thinking about what are you going to do if somebody doesn't respect that boundary? And there is no you know, right or wrong answer to that question. Again, it's very specific to the relationship and to the particular boundary and the context about what else is going on. I mean, you can think about um, just the difference between how you might respond if this is a situation where, um, you know, you're repeatedly asking somebody, um, you know, to, to not do something that's hurtful to you. Let's just say it's um, you're asking somebody to not raise their voice when um, you're on the phone with them. Um, you know, and the person just repeatedly does it, you know, time after time after time, right? That feels very different than if this is a one-time occurrence um, and the person then does it. Um, but that's the, that's the end of it. Um, and again, we want to think about the difference between you know, if that's, you know, your father or that's your child or that's your best friend um, or that's, um, you know, your neighbor. Um, those are all, you know, potentially really different kinds of relationships that might mean more or less to you. Um, and that's going to also inform the way that you respond to that. Um, but I think this um, this also brings us to a, to another important piece of this conversation, which is that we we want to remember that boundaries are not about trying to control other people. Um, and again, this is one of those those big misconceptions um, that people have is that boundaries are a way to get other people to do what we want them to do, and you know none of us have the ability to you know, force people to do things that they don't want to do, at least not other adults, certainly, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so, so we want to remember, you know, in this, in these scenarios, when somebody is violating our boundaries, um, is that certainly we have choices about the way that we're going to re be responding to that, um, whether that's going to be that we're going to ask them again to make the change, or maybe we're going to ask them in a different way. Um, to, to make a change. Um, but we also don't want to forget that the greatest power that we have in any of these situations is, is in what we're going to do ourselves in the behavior changes that we are able to make in order to get our own needs met. So again, we've been talking a lot about, you know, relationships and, and definitely when we're in relationships with other people, we, sh we can expect that some of our needs are going to be met in relationship with other people. Um, so I don't, I don't want people to end up thinking that, um, <clears throat> you know, you shouldn't expect, you know, your partner or your best friend to meet any of your needs. Um, but we can expect them to meet all of our needs. And so this is the place where we need to remember that if I keep running up against the same boundary issue with somebody, perhaps it's not going to work for me to continue to try to get them to change their behavior. Um, so that means I need to think about the options that I have in terms of changing my own behavior. And this can be, it can be difficult um, because most of us would rather that other people change, <laughs> right? If we're honest about it, right? I'd rather not have to change anything that I'm doing. I'd rather that you do the changing. Um, but if it's not working, it's not working, right? And that then we, you know, that's not helpful for us to continue to just try to force somebody to do something that it's, it, once it becomes clear that that's not going to happen, um, that's not helpful for any of us. Um, so, so anyway, we want to remember that th that doesn't mean, you know, we're stuck. It doesn't mean that you know, we should let people walk all over us or not assert ourselves. It just means that the solution is something different than what we wanted it to be 
initially. Um, so oftentimes, you know, that means that, you know, for example, I can hang up the phone if, you know, you keep raising your voice um, after I've asked you repeatedly to stop doing that. You know, at the extreme, it means, you know, that I can maybe choose to have less contact with the person who continues to violate my boundaries. Um, so there's a number of different things that we can do um, that are within our control in terms of, you know, changing what we're doing um, in order to keep ourselves safe or to get our, our needs met, whatever those might be. It's really interesting, Sharon, to think about, for some reason, it was a light bulb moment for me for you to say, like, addressing the behavior in the moment as a way of setting your boundary. Because sometimes when I think of boundary setting, I think of having this really formal conversation with someone where I lay out all of my expectations for our relationship to say where they've been violating my boundaries, you know, and I've resented them for it, even though they don't know that or, um, you know, something along those lines, but it is really empowering to hear that it doesn't have to be, you know, either end of the spectrum. It can just be boundary setting in the moment for that behavior to, to just draw your line in the sand to say, I'm not going to accept this kind of behavior. You know, if you're yelling at me, I'm asking you to stop. I'm asking you to stop. And what are, you know, so when someone's violating your boundaries or you have a recurring person in your life who, who takes those boundaries and stretches them, even when you're going out of your comfort zone to tell them, you, you know, th that you don't want them to behave that way towards you. What are some ways that you can navigate, um, like some, you know, just a boundary violator in general? Hmm. Like a chronic boundary violator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I, I think probably most people know somebody who kind of fits into that category. Um, and I, and I think the first thing that is helpful is just to recognize that that is the truth about this person is, you know, because part of what we want to do, if essentially if like your boundary is not working, if you're setting a, a boundary and it's, and it's not, you know, doing what you're hoping it's going to do is like, we certainly want to be able to look at ourselves and think, you know, is there a different way for me to set this? Is there a different way for me to communicate this? Like, is there something that I can improve upon in order to, um, make this boundary work better. Um, but but sometimes, you know, you go through sort of the checklist. And again, there's lots of stuff in the book that can kind of help you think through that, that process. Um, but sometimes the answer is no, you know, I, I'm really doing all of the things that I can do to set this boundary. And it's still not working, you know, especially if it's a particular person in your life. Um, right then that really does inform you that you need to take a different approach with this person. Um, and again, I think this goes back to what I was just talking about quite a bit is that if you have somebody who is extremely resistant to um, making any changes, probably it's that's probably not the best approach. Um, I think it ends up just being really frustrating for us to continually ask people to um, change their behavior and treat us a particular way, even if, even if it's really completely valid what you're asking somebody to do. Like, I think we can all agree, like there's nothing wrong with telling somebody to, you know, not yell at you when you're on the phone with them. Um, so it's not like there's anything wrong with, with the expectation here. But if, if the other person won't listen to the request, then what is the point of continuing to make the request? Right. I mean, that's where we really have to think long and hard about, like, what are my options here? You know, am I ready to make a bigger change on my end to, you know, to change this situation? Because um, it's not easy um, for a lot of us, I think, to sort of go to the next step, you know, and say, OK, well, what can I do to protect myself in this situation? I, I don't. I don't like hanging up on people or I don't like saying, even saying I'm going to hang up now and ending the phone call, or I don't like blocking people, you know, so that they can't call me. Um, but those are options that people have. We all have to come to them. You know, if we're going to take any of those actions, we have to come to them in our own time, right? It has to feel like, okay, that's what I need to do at this point. I've, you know, maybe exhausted my other options. Um, but again, I think it's important that we understand that we have options, 
Mm -hmm. um, and that there are things that are within our power to do rather than feeling like we are just victims of people who are going to violate our boundaries and there's nothing that we can do about it. Um, because chances are there is something that you can do. It's just a question of, you know, are you willing to do it? I mean, is that need strong enough, you know, for you to take the, the next step um, in order to get it met? So we've talked about our boundaries being violated. I'm, we're all really aware when those are being violated. How can we be more aware and apply that same level of awareness to others' boundaries that they've set with us? Like, how can we be sure that we're not violating those boundaries or also what are some common ways that you might be able to tell you're violating those boundaries if they're not verbalizing it to you? Mm. <laughs> it's such a good question. It's so important because it's, it's hard to look at your own behavior. Um, and I think as you're saying, I mean, it's, it's obviously it's, it's just harder to notice when you are violating somebody else's boundaries than it is you know, to notice when you're violate, your boundaries have been violated um, because it doesn't, right? It doesn't feel the same, um, right? I think when our boundaries are violated, as we're talking about, there's often a, a feeling, off, sometimes a strong feeling that, that comes up for us around that. Um, and, and once again, I mean, it is going to depend on, I think, the nature of the relationship that you have with the other person. Um, if it, if it is a closer relationship, um, I think we can um, we can even initiate having conversations about boundaries um, in, in order to be proactive with them. I mean, if this is something that really matters to you, I mean, you can say to people that you're close to, you know, I really I want to make sure that I'm respecting your boundaries. This matters to me. I mean, because that's a form of telling them that you care about them. Um, you tell them that you care about, you know, the boundaries that they have. Um, and so you can invite feedback. You can, you know, encourage them to let to let you know if you are violating some of their boundaries, if that's not something that you're aware of um, and have, you know, conversations about this. And again, I think once we when we frame things in terms of our needs, sometimes it can feel a little less, um, you know, maybe conflicted um, for people. Um, just the notion of saying, you know, talking about, well, what do you need in this situation? Um, here's what I need in this situation. Um, I think sometimes the language may be just shifting it, um, even from boundaries over to needs can be one that might, that might make it an easier conversation um, for people. But, but we also, I mean, we want to be, I mean, we need to be aware. I mean, that's, I mean, that's sort of the crux of it, I think, is noticing how other people are responding to our behavior. Um, again, it doesn't mean that we need to be mind readers, but I think we can be curious. We can ask the questions, you know, how is this feeling for you? Is this working for you? Um, you know, does it feel like you're getting your needs met in this situation? Anything along those lines is, again, sort of opening up that conversation um, to people. Um, yeah, that's what that's what comes to mind, you know, for me. And I think, you know, maybe also just remembering, um, you know, having an attitude of, you know, openness and being willing to learn from other people can be helpful. Um, recognizing, like, once again, that, you know, you can't know things unless people explain them to you. Um, so, so it's not, I don't want to say that you're responsible, you know, for other people's feelings and, you know, their ability to communicate or not. But I think you can you can sort of do your piece of it, which is to ask some of the questions um, if you're not sure. Ask for clarification about something, you know, or if you notice that there's a conflict, there's a misunderstanding. Um, once again, I mean, you can you can double check with that person. What is it that you're expecting from me? Uh, you know, am I meeting those expectations? And, and again, I mean, that's a place where there can be a conversation, you know, potentially where there's some compromise or some negotiation about what those are. If it, it, I'm not saying you have to agree to the other person's expectations, um, but you should know what they are. Um, so if you don't know um, what somebody is expecting from you, um, maybe you just need to ask um, and see if that can, can be a place to start with it. Sure. And it sounds like a lot of the boundary setting, but also receiving boundaries from another person 
is really tied to um, self-awareness and also a little bit of empathy, um, you know, for understanding how someone's receiving your behavior or vice versa. And I wanted to ask, you know, your book is rooted in a CBT approach. How, what, why is CBT the modality um, for treating boundaries or for, uh, you know, coming up with an effective treatment plan to work through those, those uh, scenarios? Sure, sure. Well, when we, we, you know, what we're doing when we, sorry, when we apply CBT to this situation is what we're doing is we're looking at sort of the idea of where is my thinking getting me stuck in this situation, right? So I can think about like, I I have a behavioral goal, maybe like I know what boundary I want to set, but then there's something going on in the way that I'm thinking about the situation that's making it hard for me to do that. Um, you know, so a couple of examples are, you know, thinking about the idea of I feel guilty in this situation, or I feel afraid to set this boundary, right? That's sort of an emotional, you know, block, if you will, where um, that feeling is getting us um, tied up and unable to move forward with the action that we want to take. Um, so, so when we look at the, you know, the thinking, the cognitive aspect of it, um, we can, we can kind of deconstruct that, we can um, look at what's really behind that and find some different ways to think about the situation so that we're not going to have our thoughts and our feelings getting in the way of what it is that we want to be doing um, in order to set boundaries. So I want to shift gears a little bit. We've talked a lot about boundary setting in relationship with other people. Um, I want to talk a little bit about setting boundaries with ourselves as a way of self-management. Um, can you talk about why this is important to set boundaries with yourself? Yeah, it, it's another one of those aspects about boundaries that the people kind of forget about. Um, we tend to just focus on the aspect of boundaries and setting them with other people, which again, I think it's like on some some level, it's always just easier to think about. I want to ask other people to do something. Right. <laughs> right. But, but if you think about the aspect of a boundary as a limit, um, right, whether you're setting the limit for somebody else or you need to set limits with yourself, right? This is like the basic, you know, element of managing ourselves um, and our own behavior is that we have to set limits for ourselves. And we do this all the time. And I think we're more aware of some of the limits that we set for ourselves, probably we're mostly aware of the ones that are difficult for us. Um, you know, but depending on, you know, the things that are easy for you to manage in your life, you may not even realize that, you know, for some people, it's they're, they're really good about going to bed at the same time every night. And for other people, that might be a huge struggle, um, right? So you might be aware, you might not be aware of that particular, you know, limit that you're setting for yourself. Or, you know, people are often, you know, setting limits about how much money they spend or how much alcohol they drink or, um, when they do their chores or, you know, any number of things. Um, but essentially, when we set some limits for ourselves, I mean, it, it, it helps us to be healthier physically and emotionally. And it also just helps our lives run more smoothly. You know, once we're sort of taking care of the essential functions of being a healthy person, um, you know, because, you know, you can easily just think about, well, if you set no limits for yourself, you never said no to yourself, you let yourself just do whatever felt good in the moment. Well, what's going to happen? <laughs> it feels good in the moment, but it doesn't feel good down the road, right? Because you have no money left in your bank account and, you know, you're hungover and you're overtired and, you know, your clothes don't fit anymore. And, you know, all the stuff that, you know, you're trying to, you know, manage in your life starts to fall apart if you don't give it any attention. Um, so yes, it, it is a different element of, of boundaries. Um, but, but certainly, you know, whether you realize it or not, you are, you are setting limits and you are saying no to yourself at some time. And kind of going off of that, Sharon, what are the four steps to creating those better boundaries, whether it be with yourself or with somebody else? Sure. <laughs> well, what we want to do is first of all, you know, think about what it is that we need um, in, in any particular situation. We want to have an awareness of what is it that I need here? Um, and what is it that I want the outcome to be in this situation? Um, 
once we know that, that's the beginning of understanding what our options are um, and creating a plan for ourselves, right? First, we have to know what we're trying to achieve um, before we can get to a place of actually doing it. Um, and we want, we want to make sure that we're considering all of the different options that we have um, and choosing the one that seems like it's the best option for this particular situation. Um, and then, of course, um, we're going to take some kind of action. We want to create a specific plan about how we're going to do that. Um, so there's some accountability that we build into that so that we know what we're gonna do, when we're gonna do it. Um, because here's, here's one of those, those other aspects is like often I think we have good intentions, um, but if we don't have a concrete plan, then how are you gonna know if you actually saw it through? Um, right. And we, you know, if we're going to then, you know, kind of do that reflective work and look at and, and really try to determine, was this successful? How successful was it? Um, you know, we're going to try to look at the boundary setting and figure out, do I need to make some changes? And if so, what changes, you know, that's that element of, you know, fine tuning our boundaries is like, we, we're never really done. I mean, I don't know, that's maybe the good news in the past. <laughs> you know, you're going to set boundaries for the rest of your life. Um, but as we're saying, they're not static, you know, so we're, we're always adjusting our boundaries. So there also has to be some process of, you know, looking at the, the attempt that you made to set the boundary and understanding what part of this worked, you know, what part of this needs some adjustment, you know, what are some other things that I could do to, to, to get this need met or to set this boundary in a way that it's going to be received more effectively. Um, you know, so there's that process of just adjusting um, them as we go to, you know, to help them work better. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's, it's not a question of trying to find, you know, the right boundary or the perfect boundary, but it's just, it's an improvement. Um, you know, and I think the, the other thing that I would add to that, maybe just as we're, as we're wrapping up here is, um, you know, for people to remember that in order to, I guess, get the benefit of boundaries, you don't need to get them perfect. You don't need to figure out how to set boundaries with every single person in every single situation and have them all, you know, run smoothly. Really, if you start to make some incremental changes, and even if you can, you know, just set a little bit, you know, more boundaries or a little bit better boundaries, things that work a little bit better for you in your life, you're going to start to see some changes, even if it's not, you know, everything, um, you know, so I guess it's just sort of a message of, you know, we don't want to get stuck in the all or nothing thinking about boundaries and thinking that um, we've got to figure everything out about boundaries in order for it to help um, us and our relationships in our life run more smoothly, that little changes can add up to, um, you know, significant changes, really. Well, I think that's a perfect place to end, Sharon, <laughs> with really good advice. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a great way to tie our whole conversation together with a nice bow. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Sharon. This has been really great. Uh, I feel like we're all learning better boundaries now, and we really appreciate your time talking with us. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank, thank thanks, you, Sharon. Bye. The Better Boundaries Workbook will show you how to set healthy boundaries across all aspects of life without sacrificing your kindness or compassion for others. You'll learn to define your boundaries and discover okay. why they're so important. Sharon, you can go ahead and pop okay. off if you want. That you was really great. You'll find a wealth of tips for maintaining boundaries in a constantly connected world, strategies for what to do when people get upset or threatened by your assertiveness, and ways to make sure that your needs are met. You can visit our website at www.newharbinger.com and use coupon code PODCAST25 to receive 25% off your entire order. New Harbinger Publications is an independent, employee-owned publisher of books on psychology, health, spirituality, and personal growth. For nearly 50 years, our evidence-based self-help books and pioneering workbooks have helped readers make positive changes to improve mental health and well-being. 
Founded by psychologists Matthew McKay and Patrick Fanning, New Harbinger is proud to be an employee-owned company. Our books reflect our core values of integrity, sustainability, compassion, and trust. Written by leaders in the field and recommended by therapists worldwide, New Harbinger books are practical, accessible, and provide real tools for real change. If you enjoyed today's episode, we'd love if you rated, reviewed, and subscribed to the show. We also hope that you might share it with anyone who might benefit from its content. This podcast is not a substitute for counseling with a licensed provider. Join the New Harbinger Clinicians Club, a free membership club exclusively for mental health professionals. Sign up today and you'll receive a special welcome gift, 35% off all professional books, free client resources, free eBooks throughout the year, access to private sales, a subscription to our Quick Tips for Therapists email program, and more. Visit newharbinger.com slash clinicians dash club for more information.